let's say we have an object falling through, and I'm not going to say the vacuum is going to breathe, we say falling through the air. Is the object in free fall? No. Remember, the object is not in free fall. Free fall is defined as when an object is flying through the vacuum that you can breathe. When you, we have air resistance, it is not in free fall. So object in the air, fall. Let's just analyze. Free body diagram. It's just falling straight down. What's the free body diagram? David? Uh, force of gravity in the down direction with uh, force of drag. What direction? In the up direction. Ah, okay. The force of drag, the resistance force, you also might see it as F sub D, but I'm using R right now, is going to be straight up. Opposite the direction of the velocity, it is an object that is falling down. So let's sum the forces in the y direction. We get the resistive force minus the force of gravity. That's equal to mass times the acceleration in the y direction. This time we're going to define it using um, one half of the drag coefficient, et cetera. So we have one half times the drag coefficient times the density of the medium times the cross-sectional area times the velocity squared minus mass times the acceleration due to gravity equals mass times the acceleration in the y direction. So we could solve for the acceleration in the y direction. Let's see. Um, the acceleration in the y direction is going to be equal to drag coefficient rho a v squared divided by 2 times the mass minus mass times of time minus the acceleration due to gravity because mass cancels out. Notice, with no resistive force, the acceleration in the y direction is equal to what's it? Which you would expect, right? Because it's in free fall. In the absence of the resistance force, it should be equal to the negative g. Okay. But unfortunately, it is not. And you can see why? Because of this resistance force. And we'll get back to what I was talking about. You can see that the acceleration is dependent on the velocity, but the velocity is dependent on the acceleration, the acceleration is dependent on the velocity, the velocity is dependent on the acceleration, so on and so forth. Right? So they are entangled with one another. Now, as we move faster and faster, as the velocity increases, the resistance force is going to increase. As the resistance force increases, what happens to the acceleration of the object? Kevin? Okay. As the resistance force increases, what happens, as the resistance force increases, what happens to the acceleration of the object? Right, and it's negative to begin with. The acceleration in the y direction by definition is negative, right? Let's, let's actually look at it this way. I'm sorry, let's start here. If we take an object like Captain Underpants and we hold him like this and we drop him, class, what's his initial velocity? Zero. Zero. So what's the initial drag force? Zero. Zero. So what's the initial acceleration? Negative 9.8 meters per second squared, negative g. The initial acceleration of Captain Underpants is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. As his velocity increases, because he's going down, you can see it's squared, so we're talking about the magnitude of the velocity. As his magnitude of velocity increases, the force of drag increases. What happens to that acceleration, Kevin? He's not seeing it. Help him out. What happens to the acceleration, Evan? Well, the physical number increases, but its magnitude decreases. I, I like the way you said that. Okay. I'm going to say it gets closer to zero. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. It gets closer to zero. Now, as he gets faster and faster, the limit is going to be that the acceleration gets closer and closer to zero. Eventually, the acceleration will equal zero. When the acceleration of the object, Captain Underpants in this particular case, reaches zero, 
what do we call his velocity? These. Terminal. It's called terminal velocity. So as the velocity increases, it will get to the point where the resistance force equals the force of gravity and the acceleration in the y direction equals zero. And at that point, this is when the resistance force equals the force of gravity. At that point, the velocity is going to be called the terminal velocity. And we use the subscript of t for that, v sub t. This is to be separated from tangential velocity because it's terminal velocity. Now, it would be difficult to combine both terminal velocity and tangential velocity. We can have something spinning in a circle, moving faster and faster with the acceleration in the air. Uh, that would be difficult, but fun. Uh, we have not yet to see that on the AP test, so don't worry too much about this the two subscripts of T here. They're generally not used in the same problem. So, terminal velocity. Now, the terminal velocity of a skydiver in general is somewhere between 120 and 200 kilometers per hour. Why such a large range for the terminal velocity of a skydiver, Flint? Because you can go faster when you're like going down like twice as opposed to flat. What are you changing? Area. You're changing not the surface area, cross. cross sectional area. Because as a human, you can change your shape and direction, and you can adjust your cross sectional area, and therefore increase or decrease the drag, um, the amount of drag uh, via the cross sectional area. Now, the world record for skydiving that I've read most recently was 614 miles per hour. How could someone increase their velocity, terminal velocity, so much, Evan? Was that the guy who uh, parachuted off the highest distance ever? Right. Like, so he was, in a, he was up higher in the atmosphere, so there's less air resistance? Looking at the resistance, right? Has to do with the medium you're going through. He went from such a high altitude that the density of the air, he actually had to wear a mask so that he could breathe, was so little that his drag the uh, drag resistance was, or the force of drag was so low that he was able to attain a very high terminal velocity. His left glove was loose, so his hand sold up to twice its size. Right. Right, because there was so little air pressure. Well, actually, not so good, but uh, <laughs> All right. So, we can now go through and actually figure out what the terminal velocity is. The equation for it because we come back to here we just said that we get to the point where the resistance force equals the force of gravity because the acceleration in the y direction equals zero so zero is equal to the drag coefficient times the density times the cross-sectional area times the velocity squared divided by two times the mass minus the acceleration of gravity and our goal here is to solve for the velocity so we get g the little g is equal to d rho a v squared divided by two times the mass Therefore, the velocity is equal to two times the mass times the acceleration due to gravity divided by the drag coefficient times the uh, density of the medium times the cross-sectional area, that whole thing, the square root of This is the equation for terminal velocity. Again, there are those of you who get overzealous and are going to want to um, <clears throat> memorize that equation. Please do not. You can derive it very easily doing what we just did. And in the long run, memorization is not going to get you there. So just to belabor the point, realize this is not UAM, right? Because the acceleration is changing. We just talked about the initial acceleration was negative 9.8 meters per second squared. The final acceleration when you reach terminal velocity is equal to zero. That means certainly it is not uniformly accelerated motion. <laughs>